good. <laughs> Sorry, that was Sam yeah. being startled by the recording. It's just like leave meeting. No, I don't. I don't want to be recorded. The NSA can't track me. Hello and welcome to a new look episode of Tom and Sam Rank a Band. Um, yeah. This time. Same at my end. True. True. This you time. Make it down here. We are miles and miles apart. Um, uh, and we will be for the most of the summer, which is fine. You know, we don't really care. Once for, <laughs> once for me, that Tom is miles away. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, hence the the different setting for me. Um, and now you know that the original set is Sam's house and not mine. So, yeah, I am fully doxxed. Dead giveaway. Um, this time, I was going to say this week, but this is not a weekly show. Let's be, <laughs> let's be <laughs> real. God. <laughs> I'll be able to maintain that. No, this this time uh, we are covering a band that both Sam and I. So last time we did Crowded House, which is donned on Sam's shirt at the moment, which was uh, a band that Sam loved that I wasn't as familiar with, and then before that we did Slow Dive, which was the other way around. This time is going to be a bit different because it's going to be a love fest on both ends, and we're doing Talk Talk. This is uh, the seminal uh synth pop turned post-rock band um they almost coined a genre all on their own in their last two albums which is quite interesting how influential they were in that sense i was gonna say you know it's different to the usual thing because you get a lot of bands starting off being quite artistic and then selling out and making pop music especially <laughs> in the 80s but it felt like talk talk started making pop music and then were like felt it's quite <laughs> Yeah, quite, they it seemed like quite, felt quite unfulfilled and were just like, we just want to make this kind of music now. And obviously, yeah, like <laughs> the, the record label, probably not the happiest about that. But um, yeah, so, I mean, in terms of familiarity going in, we're both kind of the same. I mean, we both got into them at the same time, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was like one of our first talking points of our friendship. It's just like, hey, I like this band called Talk Talk. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I also like this band called Talk Talk. But neither of us really knew much about them at that point. We were still both exploring, so we kind of did it at the same time. And now here we are doing these videos. We've decided, well, yeah, well, we have to do Talk Talk. We have to talk about Talk Talk. We have to talk a talk lot talk. about Talk Talk. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I think yes, Sam, you go first. Um, yeah, and we'll do album right. ranking, and of course the song ranking will come a bit later as well. Yes, so. indeed, something to look forward to always with Tom Daniel Williams VC. <laughs> so coming in at number five, which certainly won't be a surprise to Tom, is Laughing Stock, um, which is the last album and probably the one that's most bizarre out of them I do believe that Talk Talk evolve their sound and it's quite an interesting evolution when you listen to the chronology but by the time we get to Laughing Stock it does kind of alienate me. Having said that listening to it knowing that it was going to be really bizarre and weird it, I was actually pleasantly surprised that it, I could endure it and it wasn't too bad and there were actually a couple of standout songs in there uh, namely merman and after the flood which i really enjoyed and so i still came out of laughing stock with a, a good sense of satisfaction however it's certainly not my favorite of the band and it only gets a five wow okay interesting given the uh <laughs> the 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 wording of your review, I was expecting a six or a seven, but I mean that's fine. Oh well, damn! <laughs> no, <laughs> middle of the middle ground, middle ground. It's not lower than five, and so that's something to really appreciate. Well, I, appreciate. I am waiting for the day you finally go lower than five. That's going to be interesting. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it's gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen. It's gonna happen soon, but <laughs> not today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, my, I think the thing is with this band is that Sam and I have talked about the albums a lot together. So I feel like the element of surprise between us might be less than you think. But my list has changed slightly from when we last talked about them on this listen. Hot dog. So my bottom is The Party's Over, the debut. Oh, um, yeah. That's not so, a surprise. Yeah, so this one... 
I think what is interesting about this is that it is, if you listen to this album, you listen to Laughing Stock and have no context of the three albums in between. And I told you they were the same band. <laughs> if it wasn't for, um, uh, oh God, what's the singer's name? I'm just drawing a blank. Mark Hollis. Mark Hollis, yeah. Um, if it wasn't for Mark Hollis, there would be nothing connecting these two. <laughs> Absolutely nothing, which is incredible given that, there was only, you know, their first and their fifth album. There's only three albums between. There's only six years between these two albums. Like, mm, I know. It crazy. is crazy how much it changes the first and last album. It really is bizarre. So it's my bottom because to me it's their least um, artistic statement. And as you know, of the two of us, I'm the pretentious one. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm the simple one. <laughs> <laughs> However... I am actually a lot higher on my bottom album than you are because I bottom out at a seven for talk. Oh, right. I, think this oh is, wow. I think this is a pretty good synth pop album. Obviously, the self-titled track Talk Talk is fantastic. I also like It's So Serious. That's quite a pleasant tune. Um, they from from the start with these synth pop albums, I think it's quite disingenuous to just call them just synth pop albums because they they sort of incorporate like piano and acoustic guitar you know a lot of sort of more live instruments so it's not just like you know a speak and spell where it is all just you know these <laughs> easy dated synths they do a lot to sort of flesh out the sound which i appreciate um we've covered three albums now from 1982 which i noticed as well which are this avalon and oh broken frame. yes broken frame and this is the best of those three so yeah um, i agree yeah, yeah. Um, I like uh, the you. Uh, I like today. The instrumental kind of reminds me of what Rush were doing at this time. Um, obviously, no Geddy Lee on the tracks. So that's probably why Sam likes it more than Rush. Yeah, um, easy win there. No Geddy Lee. Uh, <laughs> um, there, featuring Geddy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> there is a uh, a couple tracks on here that I could uh, do without. Really, that's kind of what it boils down to. Um, have you heard the news? I'm not a big fan of. Hate is fine. Um, but yeah, it ends quite strong. I do like Mirror Man and I do like Candy. So um, It's My Life is my number five, seven out of ten. You mean party's over? Party's over, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just leave to about party's over and it's like, well, actually, it's my life. Is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just duped you. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Talking of which, my number four is It's My Life. Yeah. Uh, that's no joke. Um, got better with the second listen. I used, I think, once upon a time, it would have been at the bottom because when I first did the dive, I didn't bother listening to Laughing Stop because Paul Webb wasn't it, on it and that broke my heart. But <laughs> but now I, I can say that it's a, it's a lot better than I initially gave it credit for. There are some good tracks, although I don't think that they, there was much standout from the album. But having said that, it's, it's actually surprisingly good. It's, you know, I can listen to it. It's a lot more tolerable than Laughing Stock for me because it's early on in their career. I'm quite an 80s guy, so getting into the synth pop is good. And also, It's My Life, it, this song itself, is the first song I ever heard from Talk Talk, and so it's got to get a bit of credit there. But it's still, it's only a six. But we're going to jump up quite a lot after that. So you're going to hear my praise come up quite a way. It's my life. It's number four, but still a pretty good album. Yeah, um, I'm going to echo your sentiment there and go. It's my life at number four, which hey. uh, last time I think what's happened here is that I the first time I listened to them, I did prefer it's my life over the party's over. But I think by just hanging out with you, I in my brain I was like, no, no, the party's over is better. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's they're quite similar for me. Yeah, and I I think it's also a seven. I think that if you prefer one over the other, that's fine to me because I think they're quite similar. For me, I actually think there are more standouts on this one than on The Party's Over. Um, I like Dum Dum Girl as an opener. I think it's pretty cool. It's obviously a more fleshed out, more um, there's more money being put into the album. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is quite You're cool. To pay attention to Talk Talk. Yeah. So Dum Dum Girl is cool. Um, this album, bass wise, is just unreal i mean we can talk about it later but i know that paul webb is one of the reasons that you you know he's one of your base heroes 
so to, yeah, so to speak. Love um, it. So, yeah, I like Renee, really passionate vocals on that one as well. I'm a big fan, obviously, of um, the title track, which is really cool. The bass line on that is tremendous. Such a Shame is great. I prefer the single version because the album version runs a bit long, but it's still Yeah, great. I agree. Uh, and also The Last Time was one one of the songs that I discovered this time that I didn't really listen to much. Yeah. It was like, wow, I really like this song. I, I yeah. didn't listen to it. So, I had a similar um, feeling with Tomorrow Started, but mm. listening to it a second time, I'd totally forgotten about the song. So hearing it again, I was like, oh, right, okay. Well, don't remember you. Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so their their sophomore effort it's my life is a seven out of ten for me coming in at number three is a difficult decision here because i've ranked both of the number three and number two albums the same because i think that they're, they're both very strong albums and i don't want to discredit them at all by putting them in a certain rank having said that i've ranked them based on how much i replay the songs from it and so coming in at number three is spirit of eden it's, uh, it's a very interesting album. It's unlike anything else that I enjoy, but I do really like it. And there's something about how unique it is to me that makes it replayable. I mean, you introduced me to uh, I Believe In You, which is such a powerful song, uh, especially with its, its message and its passion that you could tell that Mark Hollis had and the fact that they were starting to get a bit more jazzy and it's more improvised makes it interesting and I know that Mark Hollis was quite reluctant to play any of the songs live because it's like it was it was just what we did at the time you know if we did it live it would have to be a different song people just want to hear what they heard on the album and so I'm paraphrasing, of course, but that's basically what he said. And I think that's the most anyone ever got out of Mark Hollis in an interview in like the history of ever. A very reluctant talker was Mark, but that kind of adds to the legend now that he's no longer with us. So, hey, but thanks for that. Uh, Spirit of Eden gets an eight from me. It's a, it is a fantastic album. And, it, you know, it's bronze medal. I mean, sure, we've only got five albums, but it's still in medal position and it definitely deserves it. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, totally fair. I mean, I, I've always, you know, how much you like that album gives me hope for your musical discovery, because that is quite an out there album. So, yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. My number three, you've already mentioned it. Um, Laughing Stock is my number three. Uh, I think a lot of people put Laughing Stock as their best album just because it's their weirdest one. So <laughs> I, think, I think maybe this might be controversial that neither of us have it in the top two. I think people might have expected better from me, at least. <laughs> um, <laughs> no one expects anything from me. No. I, I'm the maverick of the VC. Exactly. But um, I will say, I'm with you. The top three are all at least eights. Um, this is a great album. I think, um, yeah, I think it's more interesting than enjoyable. I think Spirit of Eden, they sort of get that balance a bit better where I think there's more melody, there's more, um, it's prettier. Um, it feels like the improvisation on this album feels a bit more um, integral, whereas Spirit of Eden felt like there were songs already there that were fleshed out through improvisation. Whereas this album feels like the songs are the improvisation to me. Yeah, no, I get that completely. Um, but there are some great songs. I think Merman's a great way to open um tap head i quite enjoyed quite low-key song is quite cool but my favorite track i think easily on the album is new grass i love the guitar in that song um and yeah it's nearly 10 minutes but I, every time i listen to it i just get lost in it and um if you like an album that has a very sort of cooling atmosphere sort of quite meditative album i think laughing stock is a great one to go for so yeah it's my number three <laughs> <laughs> Right, so uh, my number two, the silver medal, goes to The Party's Over. Um, I think it's quite a fun album, especially when you watch the uh, music videos that they did. They were kind of bizarre, and they did two for Talk Talk, 
<laughs> so that's fantastic. You know, you can choose which one you prefer. I uh, I think your criticisms are valid. I do think that this is the start of their career. It's very synth pop. It's definitely not what they become and it's not their peak. But I just, I really do enjoy synth pop and 80s music is what I've grown up on. My my mum was very important to my music taste. And that was basically what she listened to was synth pop, not talk talk, but she listened to that kind of <laughs> sound and so getting into that it was really good for me i mean i really like talk talk i really like today candy mirror man um the rest of the album yeah sure not as great but i can still listen to have you heard the news and another word and the rest of it kind of yeah if i listen to any album context i can get through it I, but i'm not going to go and seek out those songs but there's just a lot more repetition for me. I, I often play songs from the album, especially Talk Talk and uh, Candy. So that's why it overall on the ranking goes above Spirit of Eden, but it still gets an eight at the same level. Yeah, this is the thing with doing these videos sometimes is that these rankings can feel quite um, spur of the moment. Because maybe if I asked you in two weeks time, yeah. when you're feeling a bit differently, you might swap that two and three, so. Exactly. It's but, uh, and what else I think is quite interesting about Talk Talk is that um, the the sort of the difference between like especially you'll see in the songs video um, trying to pick out songs from Spirit of Eden and Laughing Stock was really hard because yeah. it's like one long song. <laughs> Whereas, oh yeah, especially at the start of Spirit of Eden, it's like if you're gonna have one, you got to kind of have them all. It's it's it really does blur into one, and it's quite important to listen to the albums as a whole rather than yeah. seeking Whereas, out the rainbow. It you know for me, it might be a lot easier to pick out tracks from the first two albums, which are at the bottom of my list. But <laughs> then that would make it seem like I like those albums more than <laughs> the first two, which I don't. So oh, exactly. That's 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 what you get yourself locked into listening my, to that. Exactly, yeah. And I think we'll find the same thing with Genesis, to be honest, um, when we get to that. But we'll see. Um, my number two is your number one, The Colour of Spring. I thought it would be like that. I think we've both been quite predictable. Yeah, <laughs> to, us, to us at least, because yeah. we've talked about Talk Talk Alive over the years. So the, the real only change for me was my bottom two flipping around. Um, otherwise, it's uh, yeah. much stayed the same. Um, Colour Spring, I give an eight, like I give Laughing Stock, but I think there's quite a gulf. Um, Laughing Stock is a lower eight, and Colour Spring is borderline nine for me. Um, I've listened to this album, I think, four times all the way through. We've listened to it together. We listen to it together. Um, I think there is a lot of great stuff. And for a third album, for a transition album, it's really great because that's what it is. It's a transition from mm. the synth pop to the post rock. And it kind of falls into like art pop. It kind of reminds me in parts of what Kate Bush was doing at the time. Um, that's kind of the vibe that I get. But it's also got quite an acoustic feel, which I really like. Mm. Um, which would obviously become a lot more apparent in the next two albums. Yeah. So I think this is probably the best starting point for Talk Talk because it is the best of both worlds, really. Yeah, um, living in another world. Exactly. Um, yeah. And my, uh, I like the opening track a lot, which I know you're not as big on Happiness is Easy with the children's choir, I think uh, adds a lot to the song. Uh, I think it's quite cool. I Don't Believe in You is really sweet. Um, following up the opener life's what you make it you can't deny how great that song is i think it's the only song from talk talk i've overplayed i'm a bit sick of that yeah. song now but <laughs> it's still life's what you make it it's great yeah it's a great song um, it's the second song i'd ever heard by them yeah april 5th is the biggest hint of what's to come <laughs> on the album i think yeah. um it's quite cool living in another world is fantastic it's just absolutely brilliant um and then you get a couple sort of middling tracks for me with Give It Up and Chameleon Day, which are just okay, which kind of mm. drags the whole album down. But then it ends on such a bang with Time It's Time. I absolutely love that song. It, it is, is a great song. amazing way to close the album. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, an eight out of 10 for me, but um, it could possibly go up, but I, I don't know. I've listened to it so many times now that I feel like it's it's in that. That's where it is. It's plateaued. So yeah. Colour yeah. is my number two. Yes, indeed. And what a great segue for it is my number one. Uh, it gets a nine from me. 
uh, nearly a 10, but like you say, tracks like Chameleon Day bring it down, and that's a shame. Having said that, Such a I shame. think it's <laughs> oh, this eagerness to change. <laughs> but this, I think you're right, this is a great uh, point of transition showing where they've come from and where they're going. It's a perfect middle ground in terms of Talk Talk's evolution. And for me, as I, you see, it's ranked at number one. I feel like this is the peak. And at this point, it's it kind of stays the same until laughing stock, and then that's when it kind of peters out, and that's why the band eventually has to go go away in the natural order of things. But I think that this this moment that we catch in the color of spring is seminal, and I think that the songs that are there, the the signs of where it's come from and where it's going, it's just it's just a great moment to catch of how we change as people, and how over time you will be go from one person to another but there's a point where you're kind of both and that this album captures it brilliantly and you've got like you said the best of both worlds i mean living in another world is absolutely phenomenal i think it's a great track just on its own you don't need to know anything else about talk talk listen to that song but then you've got things like april 5th which have this more free feel about it they're less constricted than they were in the other albums because they're really changing their medium and it's becoming a, a different sound and Talk Talk are becoming a different band. And I think that where they were in Colour of Spring is just fantastic. And like, and Time It's Time is a great song. I don't believe in you, power anthem. I, I just think that they're, they're really, it's a really good album. And one day I hope to own it in some form or another. Every time I go to HMV, I see a copy of Color of Spring. So we'll go there at some point. And we'll yeah, go. drag me along. I need it. <laughs> uh, speaking of owning our number one album on vinyl, um, <laughs> my number one is Spirit of Eden. I might have given it away a bit by showing it. At the start. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, I love this album. I was listening to it again um, quite recently, obviously re-listening to the albums for this. There's something about this album that just draws me into it. Um, I don't know if you know about the backstory of the album, but um, Mark Hollis said that for a lot of the recording, they just turned all the lights off in the studio and would just play and just mm -hmm. play for hours and then just take out what sounded good, and put it on the album. And that, that to me is incredible. As someone who records music to imagine putting that much faith in session musicians, because really, you know, Paul Webb is on this album, but he doesn't really play much on it. There's a lot yeah. of, you know, acoustic bass, <clears throat> which um, I assume was played by the, the jazzy session musicians a lot of the time, which I think probably don't want to speculate that probably contributed to him leaving the band after this album. Um, uh, but it is a really pretty album. Like you said, the first three songs are like one long suite. Um, but I can also enjoy them individually, which is cool about that. Um, and obviously you mentioned I Believe in You, which is one of the most powerful songs I've ever heard. The yeah. uh, organ and the vocal performance, just fantastic. I think it's the perfect rainy day album. You know, it's sort of a nice a nice hug when, when you're feeling a bit gloomy. Um, and it sort of has that sort of autumnal uh, feel. Even on the album cover, you know, it sort of has that sort of vibe. I love these covers of the last two albums. I think they're so yeah. aesthetically pleasing and they fit the music so well. Um, yeah, really great drums throughout the album as well. Um, I like how the songs sort of swell and build up and then sort of calm down and they swell and build up again and then they calm down. It, it sort of feels like waves, you know? Yeah, and you're I on a journey. It's such a unique experience. Um, you know, it, for you, doesn't listen to much music like this, but even for me, you know, I, I'm, I, I li I've listened to quite a bit of post-rock as a genre um but this is one that really takes the cake for me so uh number one spirit of eden nine out of ten love it yeah so totally valid it's a great album and that's that's quite something for me because i do not listen to anything <laughs> like that that's not my sound at all it really is a, 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 a unique album in that respect for me to be able to enjoy post-rock in that way is quite something and it shows how i've evolved as a listener Oh, and elements of jazz, like you were saying, you know, it's not as easy as just saying it is just post rock. There's, you know, jazz. Well, exactly. The improvised nature of it really does make it 
quite a feat. And I think this was the last album they did with EMI. I think it, their label was EMI this time. And they, after that, they parted ways because <laughs> Mark Collis just wasn't playing ball. When yeah. <laughs> like, he refused to do music videos. He did one, I think, for I Believe in You, where he's just sitting in the dark, just like lip syncing it. And uh, they, they refused to do things and refused to conform. And so just, eventually they parted away and went on to do other things. And Paul Webb fell away after it as well and went on to do his own thing as well. And you go to his website and he doesn't really want to talk about it much. He gives like a paragraph about it's seeming like a different life now. But it's like a fond memory, I think he refers to it as. Which, yeah, I suppose it's been, been 30, he's 30 years removed from that part of his life. It happens and he's still making music and you know unfortunately Mark Collis is no longer with us but he left us behind quite an amazing legacy and one that I think is quite underrated in the um in, in the cultural zeitgeist. I think yeah I think with people who are into music uh albums like The Colour of Spring and Spirit of Eden and Laughing Stock are quite well regarded but your average person won't know who talk talk are they will have no. it's, it's my life somewhere but yeah they don't know who it was like no not that they'd even care probably yeah so you know I, i've i was really fun to do this uh kind of similar vibes to the so Dive video because it's a band that means a lot to both of us um yeah really and yeah nice. um more videos coming soon we'll have the top 10 songs for you um which i'm quite looking forward to personally yeah, it's going to be interesting a bit more suspense i think with the songs the yeah albums. yeah i uh i will i will say that i was surprised at my own list so i don't know what i'm going to think of your list <laughs> i think you'll be surprised too yeah i'm hoping yeah. so if you're yeah. not i'm going to be bitterly disappointed <laughs> so uh we have sort of briefly referred to it and it was in the description of the last video Next artist we're doing is Elliot Smith, followed by a couple of real, real heavy hitters uh, in yeah. the Beatles and Genesis. The oh, comments man. are going to kill Sam. <laughs> that, is my, <laughs> that is my conclusion. We're going to see the Venn diagram of me and your commenters just part ways completely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. That's, that is going to be... Uh, an interesting experience. Um, I might not rear my head in the comments section for those, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, but um, thank but you. We're for getting watching. ahead of ourselves. We are. We have a songs video to record. So thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll have more on the way soon. So yeah, bye. <laughs>